evening, everyone, and welcome to this uh, webinar of School Education Gateway. We will start in uh, one minute or so. But in the meantime, I would like to introduce myself. My name is Anna Laguinha, and I'm a secondary teacher and a um, teacher trainer. Some of you know, may know me already because I have moderated many MOOCs. So I think uh, we may start. There are already many teachers uh, and uh, maybe all school, also school leaders connected this afternoon. We'll be starting in a minute. I have already posted, uh, shared in the chat, the link to uh, our first uh, poll. We would like to ask you some questions and make also um, this uh, webinar a bit interactive. So um, without further ado, let's get started. It's 5 p.m. Welcome to all teachers and uh, school leaders that have uh, uh, that are participating this afternoon to this webinar by School Education Gateway. And uh, the topic this afternoon is using massive open online courses in schools. Uh, together with me is also Benjamin Hertz, a Senior Pedagogical Manager of the Teacher Academy of School Education Get Gateway. Good evening, Benjamin Hertz. And uh, this afternoon, we will be talking about the opportunity of using open online massive courses uh, in schools as a form of professional development. So in order to enlarge open um, to a, a broader number, a greater number of teachers uh, that are eager to learn more uh, um, and, and, set, uh, and how to set up this um, school-based uh, study groups uh, alongside MOOCs, okay? So I have already pasted in the chat, but I will do that again. Our first poll, we would like uh, to, so it's a Mentimeter. If you know this uh, tool already, just go to Mentimeter, to menti.com, sorry. And uh, the, the code is uh, 12 or else uh, ch uh, mm, uh, click on the post that I've uh, pasted in the chat, so the direct link. The first question is, have you participated in a MOOC before? I guess that many of you have. Me, myself, I have taken many MOOCs by the Teacher Academy and, and uh, European School Net, of course, and I've also moderated some of these MOOCs. So let's find out, uh, okay. Uh, many times, uh, and the majority, a few times, uh, some other participants say uh, never. So uh, uh, that's uh, maybe a good opportunity to get more, to get to know more about MOOCs and how these MOOCs can help teachers um, develop uh, knowledge and um, about uh, met new methodologies and so on. Okay, so they, uh, for sure, they uh, offer many opportunities. The second question is about uh, study, uh, professional development and uh, the opportunity of doing this with other teachers. So have you ever participated in online professional development for teachers together with your school colleagues? How many times uh, has it happened to you? Uh, it happened to me, for example, that you are attending a course and it is really, really valuable. It provides great uh, de professional development and you would like to maybe to involve other teachers. Uh, so, uh, Anna, sorry, sorry to yeah? quickly interrupt. Just to check, are we supposed to see the poll? Are, are you share, Are you going to share your I screen? Am sharing so the, yes, I'm sharing the screen. Can't you see it? No, we, uh, we can't see it. The moment we can see okay. the slides. Sorry about that. Uh, let me let me check it. Like I am sharing the screen. Stop presenting. I'm sharing the screen. Can you give it another try? Yes, I, I'm not sharing the screen, but uh, screen sharing. Yes, it's uh, sh sh should be. Let me sh check. Sorry about that. I will do it that again. Nope. Can you no see problem. it now? Can you see it now? I see some people nodding and I can't see it yet, but I think it's coming now. Yeah. 
uh, we've had a technical issues the whole day, also at school, you know, so sorry about that. There must be something on that connection, I don't know. So can you see my screen now? I can see it now. Okay. Uh, right, I'm going back to show the results of the previous question then. Have you participated in a MOOC before? Majority says a few times, some say never. All right, so this, this is a good opportunity to get to know more about MOOCs and also on how these can be used for uh, involving other teachers uh, and setting up maybe a study group in your own school. So the second question is about have you ever participated in online professional development for teachers together with your school colleagues? The majority says a few times and some say 32% many times. 28% say never. All right, this is really very interesting. Like, let, let's go back to Benjamin Hertz and the uh, teachers, this uh, group of teachers who have participated in a two year uh, project by, uh, moderated by Benjamin Hertz and Maria Carrera, uh, an initiative by the School European, uh, 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 sorry, Education Gateway. Uh, that has really um, researched on the possibility of using MOOCs for professional development uh, in a school environment. So uh, I'll pass it over to you, Ben. Thank you very Many much. Thanks. Many thanks, Anna, for that introduction. A very warm welcome this afternoon to everyone joining here. Um, we have almost 300 participants. Um, and I am noticing the result, I must say, my team's application is slowing down quite substantially. Uh, so let's hope um, we're spared of any further technical issues. So as Anna was already introducing myself, my name is uh, Benjamin Hertz. I'm a senior pedagogical manager of the School Education Gateway uh, European Commission initiative, and it's a pleasure to host this webinar. Uh, this afternoon. Um, I'm joined here today by um, many fantastic teachers from across Europe who I'll introduce in a moment. Uh, but before I do that, um, I want to give you a quick background story, but sort of uh, context to why we are running this webinar about uh, massive open online courses in schools. Um, just a quick word regarding practicalities. So um, you can use the chat. Please use the chat um, to ask any questions, to add any comments. Anna um, and other colleagues will be monitoring the chat and will be uh, answering your questions. Um, we'll also have a question and answer session later on, so we'll be picking up some questions coming from the chat uh, to be answered by our speakers, our panelists. Um, what you can't do is is um, you can't use your microphone in this in this call. So I've seen a couple of people raise their hands um, to be able to given given the opportunity to speak. That's not possible in this uh, webinar today, um, simply because there's too many of us. So without further ado, um, let's get started. Um, <clears throat> a very quick um, background to the Teacher Academy. So if you, uh, well, you all registered via the Teacher Academy, so you'll at least have some sense of what it is. But uh, just as a bit of background, it was launched in 2016 by the European Commission. And uh, it's a platform where we offer MOOCs, webinars, teaching materials um, <clears throat> to teachers, but also to other school education stakeholders. Today, we're mostly going to be talking about MOOCs. Um, these are the centrally organized online courses that we from the Teacher Academy team are organizing. Um, there are many other courses that you can access via the Teacher Academy, but those aren't organized by us. Those are organized by external training providers. So on these MOOCs, we have uh, over the last four years offered 31 of these, 31 courses with over 50,000 enrollments. Um, <clears throat> and all the courses have been developed with the support of a pedagogical advisory board. Now, as Anna has already mentioned, um, we strongly believe in the potential of MOOCs as a form of teacher professional development. And we also know from the evaluation results that we get from our courses that they are highly appreciated and they also have an impact on teachers practice. So I'm going to show you um, just a, a very few um, um, statistics from a very recent impact report. Uh, we, not we ran, but actually an external research agency ran um, uh, with, uh, I think, some quite interesting results. As you can see here, uh, a very large percentage of teachers highly appreciate the courses, the value of the courses, um, and then also 85% of teachers indicate that participating in the course results in some form of change in their classroom practice. So this is all quite promising in particular because many of those teachers see the changes that they implement as a long term change. Um, and that points really to the promise that these open formats of professional development where we can have hundreds, if not thousands of teachers participate at the same time. 
There are, however, significant challenges at the same time to this, and we're very aware of that. Um, and that's really the starting point for our webinar today. So let me just quickly outline where we see some of the main challenges. The first challenge is a lack of awareness about what MOOCs can offer us or the opportunities that they can provide. Um, sometimes simply teachers don't know that they're available. Um, either at European level or at national level, um, they're simply not aware of the offer that is there. But other times they might be aware, but they are very skeptical about, well, is this really something for me? Can I participate in a, in a MOOC for an international audience uh, organized by some organization which isn't actually in my country? So justified questions, of course. So that is definitely also out there. There's also a problem of accessibility, uh, lack of digital competence. Um, you do need to have some competent digital competence to be able to benefit from these courses. Of course, they're online. You have to produce something as part of the courses. So that requires a bit of uh, technical know-how. Um, you need to be able to regulate your own learning. Um, there's not someone sitting next to you telling you you have to do this, this, this and that. Um, so it's very much up to you. Um, often these courses are also not in your native language. So um, you need to be at least have a certain level of confidence and competence, of course, in the language of the MOOC. Um, and then very importantly, of course, there is also a recognition problem. Many teachers participate in these MOOCs, um, but um, they get a badge or a certificate, and that's all nice, but um, often it's not formally recognized um, as a professional de development credit that could have an impact on their career at national level. So these were some of the mean, or these are some of the big challenges that we see at the teacher academy level uh, in regard to the MOOCs. Um, so we try to find a way how to address this. And the solution we wanted to, uh, to pilot, to test out, is this. Um, it's school-based study groups. Um, so it's a blended format of professional development for teachers, um, but it couples in a way the best things about the online sphere with the on-site, the face-to-face -face environment. Um, so we have the MOOC, uh, there's videos there, there's other forms of content there, there's activities there, and around that um, we build an international community. If you've participated in one of our MOOCs, you'll, you'll know what that means. There's a Facebook group, um, there's usually quite a bit of activity from the, from the teachers participating. So it's an international community of peers, teachers exchanging with each other, that's great. But for all those teachers who maybe lack some of the competencies I've mentioned, or who lack some of the awareness, or, or, or are a bit more skeptical about it, is they probably wouldn't participate in this. Um, so we need a way to pick them up um, where they are, and that's in school. So uh, we thought about setting up these school-based communities or study groups, uh, which taps into that international community and taps into the MOOC environment. Um, and this is exactly what we tested out of the last two years um, with eight highly engaged um, and excellent teachers from across Europe who are hosting with me today this webinar. Um, and they are, these are these are these teachers you'll be hearing from uh, almost all of them in a moment. Um, so I won't be introducing them individually now, um, <clears throat> but uh, they're part of our panel and part of our speakers. Um, yeah, so it's a real pleasure to to welcome all of you here um, to to this event, and and really nice to see this as a sort of final uh, outcome of the work that you have been doing over the last two years. Um, yeah, uh, and with that, um, I would like to pass on to one of those teachers, uh, Elena Petsi, who is um, a secondary teacher of Spanish as a foreign language at Liceo Larabasi in Bologna, Italy, and she has she does many other things. Uh, some of these things she will now be telling you about, and she will tell you uh, in a bit more detail what it ex what these study groups are actually about um, and why it makes sense to use them when using when learning with MOOCs. So over to you, Elena. Okay, so thanks. I I will assume the control of the PowerPoint. So thanks a lot, Ben, and all the the team to, for inviting me this afternoon to share these uh, few lines, few ideas, and basically uh, the, the title, Why Learn with MOOCs and School-Based Study Groups. So um, just, uh, okay, so here we are. So. Uh, the, the the main ideas uh, are why learn with MOOCs and why use study groups. So to to explain a little bit what I did in the last two years, I try I will try to um, show with you what I did both at school and at regional office because uh, just a 
two lines to define my professional context. I worked uh, both at school level, uh, to the Ciola Rabassi in Bologna in Italy, and at the regional department of the Ministry of Education. So I had the chance to experiment and to, to put in practice the study group uh, at both levels. Uh, so to go... Oof. Okay. Um, Ben already said something about this, um, this slide, but I think this is the very uh, important point, focus point, uh, because as, he, as Ben has already said, uh, there's an international community of peers represented by, by the MOOC, but uh, for those teachers who don't feel at ease to, to plunge immediately in this uh, huge community, um, a study group, a school-based community of peers can be uh, really helpful and uh, it, represent, um, it represents an added value to, to reach an effective teacher uh, collaborative professional development. So uh, this is the idea that I uh, tried to, to implement at school and if I can go. So this is my experience not only my experience, but the experience I tried to, to put in practice together with my colleagues and with a group of uh, friends, colleagues, uh, who helped me in uh, implementing the, the study group. So I started at school with a group of 25, 30 teachers, and the great majority of those teachers never attended the MOOC before. And uh, the, the characteristic of this group was that it was composed by teachers of different subjects, um, more or less all the subjects taught in our schools, uh, in our school uh, were represented. Um, those teachers were from different levels of language skill. Um, English is not so um, well known. Uh, among, among teachers, at least in, in my context, and different levels of ICT skills. So uh, those were the, the main challenges we, we faced. Uh, how did we do the... Oof. It's a, it's a little bit tricky. Okay, so this is uh, what we did. We took the project-based learning course, the MOOC, um, and we, uh, how did we, we do? The development of the case study was the following. We met once a week to follow the development of the four modules of the course. And during these meetings, we uh, worked together knowing the characteristics of my colleagues, I tried to reshape a little bit of the path. I summarized the main concepts to, to make them more accessible to my colleagues. I tried to, to make things a little bit easier uh, just at the beginning to, to give them the, the support to, to feel more comfortable and more at ease. And also I divided them into small groups, small working groups, uh, where they could develop, do the activities proposed by the, the modules themselves. Um, another added value was that the teachers could experiment what they were learning together with their students in class. So this was a, a really important part of the, of the study group. Uh, and they asked for a last meeting to share the results of the experimentation in class. So this was a plus that we added at the end of the, of the study group. At the regional office, I did more or less the same. Uh, the structure was more or less the same, but I worked there with a group of more experienced teachers because uh, they were uh, teacher trainers from different schools from all over the region, my region where I, where I live and where I work. And uh, we took the mentoring in schools course, but the, um, the development was the same. We met once a week, we worked together, they split it into groups, they did the activities and so on. So uh, this was the basic format. So the, the first question, why learn with MOOCs and why set up a study group? Well, because uh, as Ben also said, teachers, my colleagues were rather shy about writing and interacting in the large online community. 
Uh, most of them were not so skilled in English, both in English and ICT, or in English or and in ICT. And working in small groups with other teachers uh, was uh, very supporting, helpful, uh, and this way of working allowed them later to plunge into the wider community, to interact, to write in the forums, so to feel more at ease uh, in, in a second step. Also, having a tutor who oriented the path, who summarized the main concept, who tried to, to make things easier, uh, helped them and helped them also to implement in class what they were learning and uh, they could share their experience with other colleagues. We tried to, uh, to, to create um, a way of training, a peer uh, training, and we called it the kind guests. So teachers uh, went to each other classes to, to observe, to see, to, to share experience. Well, of course, the support from our headmaster was crucial, so that we, we felt very uh, supported by, by her, and this also was very, very important. And the result was that the first group was about 30 people from my school. The second group, uh, mixing up uh, teachers from my school and the regional level, um, was more than uh, 70, had more than 70 participants, and it was for all of them the discovery of a new world and the, all those teachers could complete the course. So this was a, a great success for us. Uh, let's go further. And uh, OK, uh, the second step was uh, during the coronavirus time, uh, the lockdown. But as it was so successful, the, the meeting the four meetings during the four modules of the course uh, that we decided to move together again and to do to to replicate the same structure but uh, online and we did it via Google Meet. Uh, we met again uh, once a week. The online phase, uh, I replicate the online phase both in March and in October, and I mix, as I said before, I mixed up the school and the regional level. Uh, we created a regional group of teachers and digital trainers. We met via Meet, we shared presentations, Padlet, uh, learning diaries, and so on. And the novelty was uh, the creation of a middle management staff, a group of teachers who already um, who have already taken the, the course, the first step, the first experience, and they helped me to, to support, to encourage, to help those teachers who felt less at ease in this uh, kind of situation. Uh, the other um, successful uh, result was that uh, a good group of teachers who have never uh, attended MOOC bef MOOCs before, they took the first MOOC, the face-to-face -face and the online MOOC, and the second uh, development, implementation of the study group. And then they said, now we are uh, ready to do it to get, um, autonomously um, on our own. And so they went on and they, they kept on um, train, training in an in autonomous way. So to sum up, the key words of our experience a lot of opportunities, of course, a lot of challenges, but we tried to solve, to fix the issues that we had. Uh, no doubt that this kind of training uh, gave us some, a, a lot of benefits and at the end also uh, a sort of recognition. So the idea is let's move together because yes, we can, we can do it and people and teachers are happier to to experiment and to put in practice. Thanks a lot. Many, many thanks, Eleanor, for that excellent overview. Um, and I can already see from the comments in the chat that colleagues are um, really quite excited about the ideas you've shared there. And we'll go into more details um, with the uh, other teachers in a moment, talking about um, the practicalities of implementing this. You've already mentioned um, a couple of points regarding um, 
uh, getting your the support of your head teacher. Um, I see, unfortunately, you've stopped sharing oh, the slides yes. now. So, I've, uh, I thought I was giving you back and I no, stopped the presentation. Don't worry, no, no, no problem, no problem. Um, I think you also noticed that uh, at least my Teams app is getting very, very slow. There are so many people here now, um, but uh, we'll get there. Um, <clears throat> So uh, well, um, let me uh, let me move on to the next um, um, sort of part of our webinar now, uh, and it's a real great pleasure to introduce uh, three colleagues of Elena, who I had the privilege of actually meeting. It's about a year ago now in Bologna, um, who participated in this study group, and we thought it would be a great opportunity to actually hear from the teachers who um, who really benefited from Elena's work on this, um, and to understand a bit from them where they feel um, where the real advantages and and what they particularly like, what was the impact. So um, let me introduce you to uh, Miriam Stagni. I hope I say that right. Um, uh, Miriam teaches English language um, at uh, La Rabassi, the school where Elena also teaches uh, and is the coordinator of the foreign languages department. Um, ah, let me see now that we move to the right slides. Um, so I'll continue with you, Giorgio, in a moment um, as our second uh, panelist. Let me just see. So. Fortunately, it's not possible to skip to. Uh, here we go. So um, our second um, panelist for this very, very short panel is Giorgio Canalini, who uh, was also a, uh, was a great cook. Uh, I benefited from his cooking skills when I was uh, in uh, Bologna. Also a pleasure to have you here, a teacher of English and also a member of the Team for European Project at Laura Bassi. And then also uh, Roberta Rosmini, who teaches English language and is also a member of the Team for European Project um, at, at Laura Bassi. So a very warm welcome to the three of you. Um, I'd like to hear from you a bit uh, about your experience of participating in such study groups. So let me start with you, Miriam. Um, can you maybe quickly tell me what was the best Best thing about this study group experience for you? Yeah, can you hear me? Yes? Yes, can hear you very well. Hi, Ben. Hi, everybody. I'm very happy to be here as I was happy when I met you in Bologna last year. So, uh, well, as you can see, I'm an experienced teacher because, as you can see, I'm not so young, but I've been teaching for 35 years, you know, up to now. And uh, you know what happened to me last year? I was uh, really, mm, let's say, without demotivated in a sense, because you tend to repeat all the same things, even if you follow a lot of courses, a lot of uh, seminars. So you, when you are an experienced teacher, sometimes you tend to repeat uh, the lesson you did the previous years. And so I was a bit demotivated. And once I met Elena, and I said, Elena, oh, I feel fed up with the whole situation. And she said, why don't you join us uh, with the, the course I'm organizing now? And so I said, yes, I'll do that. And I met there a lot of my colleagues, uh, uh, really a lot of my colleagues. And we started uh, chatting and working with enthusiasm. And this was the, the start. This was new breath for me. Uh, a lot of energy from uh, this course, from this course, and uh, you know, as Ben said, uh, uh, what I really thought uh, about uh, my uh, myself was that uh, I I lacked uh, um, a lot of uh, digital competence, so I didn't feel sure about uh, myself. Uh, and so I started again uh, doing a lot of job and, and, and studying at home, learning at home, because I didn't want to show I was not so good at uh, digital skills. And so this was very useful for me. And then, as Elena said, uh, while we were working all together, um, it was a, there was a lot of empathy with our colleagues, uh, a, a large group from uh, a lot of uh, different colleagues of different uh, different uh, subjects, uh, and uh, you see, um, it was uh, it was important for for me to start again, and so I decided, as all the others did, uh, to jump into the class and to uh, you know to reorganize my, my my plan for the class, and so we started. I had an international class uh, last year because there were two students from Brazil, um, 
three students uh, in uh, um, mobility from Spain, and then our Italian students. So it was an international class. And so we decided, Ellen and I, and all the group of uh, teachers we were working during uh, this uh, course, uh, we decided to, to do a research, and we actually did it in the, this class, and uh, we planned um, uh, we planned an interview with the, the mothers and grandmothers of my students, and uh, actually all the students were involved, and actually everything moved on, and uh, it was fantastic because at the end we published our research in the school magazine, and uh, so it had uh, a very powerful impact on the school as well. And uh, what I can say is uh, that uh, you, you, you shouldn't stop thinking that there's something new in life. Uh, and uh, this is my piece of advice for everybody who is here, who is younger than me, of course. Uh, our job is uh, the most beautiful job in the world because you have to do with students. Uh, and even if you grow up, you become a bit older and older, then you, you meet new students who are the same age. And uh, I, I work uh, at Laura Bass in Bologna, which is a huge school, and we meet a lot of students uh, every day. And uh, so this is uh, Many. an enthusiastic way of restarting uh, a career at the end of it. Okay. Many thanks, Miriam. No, I think um, a very inspiring uh, message there. Um, and, and really nice to see this kind of knock-on effect that this participation had for you and, and the school. Um, I, unfortunately, I do need to move on. We, we are already a little bit behind schedule, so I'm going to have to speed things slightly up. But many thanks, Miriam, for um, that input. So um, I want to come to, to you, Giorgio. Um, and, and can you maybe uh, elaborate a bit from what the impact was for you? Um, was there anything in regards to the classroom practice or interaction with colleagues, how, how this has impacted the work that you do, this participation in, in the study group? Giorgio, we can't see you, unfortunately, and can't hear you. Can you hear me now? Yes, now I can hear you. Excellent. Great, great, great. Hello, uh, good evening to everybody. Here is dark, so I think that everywhere in Europe is more or less the same time. So I just go quite fast. I totally agree with Miriam. What she said was exactly what I thought, and it exactly repeated my experience. You know, um, just focusing on on what happened. Uh, first of all, the first impression I had when we 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 had this opportunity was the fantastic interaction with colleagues that was very, very similar to what we have already talked about. It is the peer-to-peer -peer activity in, uh, in, in the classroom, because on, in that situation, we were turned into students. Uh, and uh, it was an extremely fruitful exchange of opinion and perspectives. And uh, uh, when, we, when we applied all these uh, things we have learned in our class, we had this fantastic reaction that, first of all, we saw the reinforcement of students' autonomy. Um, I tried to, um, to to ask them, dividing them into group two. Uh, it was the, the last class, I mean, the last, uh, the last year in our school, and uh, I asked them to, uh, to ask their grandparents to report an historical fact, comparing it to what the uh, official story said. And it was really, really incredible discovering how the point of view uh, was different. And um, uh, another very interesting aspect of working in this way is the fact that you have quite close steps in your working, and that gives a incredible rhythm not only to, to us as the teachers, but for the students. And uh, given this, that could be sounds negative, but it's not negative in my opinion, a limited horizon helps you and helps the student to focus your attention on the final goal without distraction, because, you know, this is a very big problem, you know. Uh, you don't have an, a huge amount of time. You, always, you are always running towards time that goes by. 
and uh, and so you really need to be focused on your final goal. And uh, um, another really really interesting aspect is that uh, uh, sharing. I mean, with when you share this activity with your students, you are highly involving and motivating uh, because you you cut the distances between you and your students, and you also melt the students because you know that sometimes in classes you have divisions because it's always happened. Um, um, and as final aspect is the awareness that internet, the programs, the apps, etc., etc., um, are not always so easy to be fruitfully used and that they are not a shortcut to, to, to give a final product, but um, they are, they must be considered as tools for an activity and not the final goal. And sometimes it's not so evident for us and for our students. That, that's what I wanted to say. It's very, very fast because I don't want to steal uh, precious time to my colleagues, but uh, this this was really my enthusiastic approach to this method. Thank you. Many thanks, Georgia, for sharing your thoughts and thanks for uh, for speeding through uh, all the key points there. Um, so I, I come to to you, Roberto. Now um, I'd like to understand a bit from you where you might see some opportunities for improvement. If you would organize together with Eleanor. Um, such a study group again, um, what would be any recommendations or suggestions from your side um, in regards to how it could still be improved? Okay, uh, thanks for having me and I'm obviously more than honored to be here with you and see you again. Um, okay, I totally agree with Giorgio what he said. Uh, I think that this kind of uh, uh, activity makes you reconsider a lot of things uh, and it triggers a train of thoughts uh, and the reflections on what you do, the way you teach and so forth. Um, just to tell you something about uh, massive open online courses, uh, I think that they usually uh, like leave you um, alone facing things, uh, whereas uh, thoughts uh, um, no, through the, this kind of blended courses, uh, the key element of companionship is granted. Uh, so you can feel uh, um, able to share not only your outputs, outcomes uh, and uh, takings, but also your understanding and uh, uh, your doubts uh, and your your uh, uncertainties. And this is very supportive and important. Uh, Elena for us has been a very uh, meaningful uh, leader, leader and she offered the group uh, uh, tips and and, uh, and tools, uh, reassuring us uh, and uh, pacing us at the proper moments as well. Uh, that being said, uh, coming to your question about possible areas of improvement, um, consider the fact that uh, in our school, uh, not many teachers uh, um, enrolled, uh, a, a quite large group but not all of us uh, so we can consider it a success anyway but uh, a possible move forward might be uh, to get more teachers involved um, how to achieve this strategic uh, goal uh, um, has to be carefully weighed because uh, teachers are feeling uh, a little bit uh, overburdened probably a change is on the cards uh, thanks to new technologies Mm, because they are meant to be helpful and uh, under various aspects, um, even uh, cutting, as uh, Giorgio said, the uh, uh, distance uh, between us and our pupils, but they are perceived as something on top of the usual uh, teaching learning habits, uh, which we all agree are to be changed and uh, uh, remodeled and modified, not to mention some still existing technical uh, difficulties and disruptions. Uh, so this is one, uh, get, uh, trying to get more people involved. Um, another possible improvement uh, worth saying um, might be to form uh, more than one study group. I mean, uh, um, 
um, each one composed of teachers uh, from the same uh, school subject. In this way, um, teachers might be able to get a focus uh, in depth into the guidelines of the MOOC uh, they are attending by working together, of course, uh, under the tutoring of, uh, a, let's say, senior teacher, someone uh, who uh, has already been formed on the occasion of a previous uh, uh, study um, group uh, and uh, working together, prepare tailored and targeted uh, materials uh, and activities uh, for their specific subjects, uh, uh, inspired by what the MOOC uh, is uh, focusing on. Uh, what would I change uh, uh, next time? I would probably like a more relaxed uh, schedule, depending on the moment of the year uh, in which the MOOC uh, takes place, uh, uh, but it's almost always like that. Uh, teachers are um, struggling with uh, deadlines uh, and many things to do. Probably planning a meeting every two weeks instead of one uh, would be appreciated. Many thanks, Roberta, for some quite concrete points in regards to the improvements and, of course, highlighting that really crucial issue of trying to ensure we get even more teachers. I mean, this was a pilot, so it was quite small, um, even though within your school, I mean, it was already a good, a very good number. But yeah. that's yeah. exactly the purpose of this webinar um, is to ensure that we find more new mechanisms to um, to well to get more teachers involved and more teachers engaged and and at the end of this webinar um, I want to say a few words about some of the resources some of the supporting resources that are coming out of this exercise and hopefully that will allow more and more teachers to actually benefit from this kind of setup so many thanks to you and many thanks to uh, Miriam and Giorgio for sharing your thoughts on this um, I do unfortunately have to move on now uh, we are about 15 minutes behind schedule so quite a bit um, I do hope um, everyone has a bit more time than um, 6 p.m. But we'll we'll try to uh, not to go uh, too too much beyond uh, our original schedule. Um, so um, we now come to our um, well, actually, uh, if I may, Anna, um, I, I see yeah. you've been posting into the chat um, the, yeah. the poll, but out of time reasons, um, I, I, I suggest course, we skip yeah. that. Um, I would still recommend for all the participants to um, respond to it. Um, and then at the end, we can um, still quickly share the, the final result. Um, but okay. I suggest we move on to the to the second panel. Um, uh, yeah, but if yeah. you've been... If, if, you've I, been... if I may just uh, say something, because in the chat, the participants are asking about the certificate. At the end of this webinar, uh, there will be a link shared in the chat uh, to a survey, a monkey survey. So you, uh, by answering this uh, uh, final survey, you will be redirected to the education uh, school, gateway, uh, school education gateway website. And from there, you will be able to download the certificate. Thank you. Thank you, Anna. OK, so we'll come to that at the end of the webinar. Um, I'd like now like to move on to uh, our, the, the second and really core part of this webinar, and that's to discuss um, with some of the fellow pilot teachers uh, how can this kind of setup be replicated? So how can you, the audience, um, replicate what um, Eleanor has been outlining and, and the colleagues have been outlining just before. Uh, and for uh, to do that, I have um, uh, on this panel uh, Christina Nicolaita, who's a teacher of physics um, uh, from Romania, Celeste Chimuras, who is a teacher of English um, uh, as a foreign language in Portugal, Mirella Radosevic, um, who's a, a primary and secondary school teacher in Croatia, Lizanne Verver, who, um, who's a secondary teacher of English in the Netherlands, and finally Guillermo Medrano, who's a teacher in secondary and vocational training in Spain. So a uh, very warm welcome to all of you. Um, we want to talk a bit about this key question, how can teachers and school leaders set up a study group at their school? So I want to start with a question to you, Christina. Um, what was the first thing you did in your school to get started with this study group concept? And how did you convince your school leadership to support the activity? Uh, Eleanor mentioned already that this was really crucial for, in her school. Um, can you say, can you tell us a bit about your experience in this regard? Uh, can't hear you, unfortunately. You are muted. Um, no, can't hear you still. 
Okay. Um, if that doesn't. Yeah. Sorry. Now. Excellent. Yeah. Now. Excellent. You can hear me now. Yes. Now, now you're muted again, Christina. Unfortunately, uh, I, I know there's a bit of a lag um, when you press the unmute okay. and mute button. Now I can hear you. Okay. I won't touch anything starting from now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sounds Sorry. good. <laughs> okay, so uh, in my opinion, uh, indeed, uh, the management support is uh, very important. Uh, so the first step was uh, to introduce the school. Uh, 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 European school uh, school gateway and um, uh, our pilot to my uh, head teacher. She is uh, always willing to to join a European project, but but this time she was a little bit worried about the level of English English and uh, ICT uh, skills uh, required. Uh, I explained that uh, the uh, pilot is about uh, creating study groups and uh, get help from, I don't know, uh, English teachers and uh, IT teachers in school to help other colleagues. And uh, then uh, she told me not only to count on her uh, for supporting me, but uh, to count on her for participating uh, in the pilot. Uh, so she was one of the participants in the, the course. Uh, I then uh, introduced the pilot to my colleagues and um, they responded very enthusiastically. So I decided to take a step further. I uh, introduced the, the course uh, on social media, media on uh, Facebook, on our school page. And um, I used the Google Doc to invite other teachers to join us. And then um, I used a Doodle to, to set up the meetings. So I had about uh, 30 teachers uh, in the first phase and uh, all of them uh, finished the course. Many thanks, Christina, for that overview and really um, nice to hear your experience in that regard. Um, I want to come now to, to you, Mirella. Um, um, one of the key questions that you need to ask yourself when you start in such an exercise is, is what MOOC will I actually work with? And I mean, we on the Teacher Academy, we offer MOOCs, but there are many mm -hmm. other MOOC providers also out there. So um, how did you actually decide which MOOC to work with? Uh, can you hear me? I am having Yes, I can hear you very well. Okay. Great. Uh, well, first, I recruited a group of teachers after a staff meeting where I briefly presented the project. Then I presented the teacher academy itself and teachers could see how it functions. After that, I used the Google form with a few courses outlined in brief to see which course would gain the best interest. And almost everybody chose the open e twinning course. So this is what we went for afterwards. Excellent. Thanks. Marilla, I think, you know, I think that's a really excellent way to understand, you know, the kind of needs and interests of your of your colleagues and, and to ensure that what MOOC you work with is relevant to the context of, of, of well, your school and your colleagues. So many thanks for that. Excellent. Um, uh, I come now to, to Celeste from Portugal. Um, can you tell us a bit about your experience of uh, recruiting colleagues and setting up the study groups? Um, I, I'd imagine, and unfortunately we don't have the poll results, we didn't look at the poll results, but I imagine that there might be a bit of worry from some here in the audience who say, yeah, it sounds really interesting, but I'm not sure if I could really convince my colleagues to join. So uh, how did you go about that? Um, can you see me and hear me, Ben? Yes, can see and hear you well. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, well, I wanted to start small, but also steadily. So I chose the teachers that I wanted to involve in the project. And so I specifically invited five colleagues to do the PBL course with me. Uh, and I wanted teachers from different subject areas, and I wanted them to have different levels of English proficiency and digital literacy um, to get a wider range of responses to the course and the platform. 
so uh, I wanted to show them, and to everybody really, uh, that you don't need necessarily to master the English language to do the courses. Uh, and I wanted to show that the platform is so user-friendly that you can do the activities quite easily. Um, I also wanted to include some teachers that had some kind of leadership role in school. So, uh, in order to disseminate the project and the learning involved to the other colleagues. Um, so, I had heads of department, projects coordinators, had teachers, Erasmus Plus coordinators, and teacher trainers. Okay. As for the subjects, I chose also teachers from different subjects. So, I had teachers of English like myself, uh, maths, science, economics, um, uh, and so we all worked together. Uh, we did the course uh, between uh, June and July 2019, so the first course, which is usually a very busy time in our schools. Um, and we had five face-to-face -face meetings uh, in order to complete the four modules of the PBL course. Um, and everything just went smoothly, really. Excellent. Many thanks. And, uh, you know, that's a really interesting approach and I think very valuable probably for our, for our listeners today um, to understand the very important dynamic that you established by getting a very diverse group of teachers with diverse set of skills that complement each other to a certain extent. And as we know from your follow on experience, that was very successful. So many thanks, Celeste. I'll come back to you in a moment. Uh, I want to now um, come back to, to Christina again. Um, and you, you did mention the use of Doodle to sort of schedule the meetings. Um, can you can you tell us a bit more about how you actually went about the scheduling process? Um, and then also, what did you do to prepare these meetings? So how did you go into these meetings? Did you have a plan? OK, thanks. I hope you can hear me well now. Yes, very well. OK. Um, my group was uh, not similar with uh, Celestis, more like uh, Elena's. So uh, we were from uh, my school, but also from um, uh, the town and even uh, from the villages around the town. We had different uh, schedule. We have different uh, um, uh, times. Uh, um, so um, we met uh, twice a week at the beginning, uh, once in the morning and once in the afternoon. Uh, but in time, uh, uh, they they got more more skilled, and uh, I only met uh, um, those who who were in trouble, who couldn't uh, find their way um, on the platform. Or uh, uh, so it was more like a peer to peer um, uh, meeting. Uh, in preparation, I was attending the same course. We have chosen. Um, uh, uh, learning with creativity, let the game begin. And um, I, I went through the course in advance um, to get familiar with the module, uh, with the tasks required, with the web 2.0 tools um, needed, so I could answer their questions or maybe to find the answers together during the meetings. Many thanks, Christina. Um, coming back to Celeste, you know, can you um, can you tell us a bit about how it was for you in regards to the meetings? I mean, what happened during the study group meetings? How did you structure the meetings? Okay, so can you see me and hear me again? Yeah. Yes, very well. Okay. <laughs> Sorry to ask, but sometimes this goes down. Okay, so as I told you, we had five meetings altogether. Um, the first meeting was very important because it was when I defined the action plan of the study group. So I gave important information about the pilot and the course that we were going to take. Uh, we, I taught my colleagues how to register and enroll. Uh, we defined the dates uh, to start the modules and do the modules. Um, we created learning diaries using Padlet, and I explained how to use this, this tool to my colleagues who didn't know how to work with it. And I also created a dissemination strategy of the activity so that we could then share it with other teachers um, inside and outside school. So uh, I created a short accredited session. Um, we did the different modules of the course at the same time, but sometimes we did it face to face, so in school, and sometimes we did it at home, uh, which allowed the participants to uh, experience different situations during uh, uh, the course. 
So when we were working together at school, uh, this allowed for a closer support on my part. And when they were working uh, at home, each one of them had to take their own decisions and they only uh, asked me or contacted me in urgent situations. Uh, so what was my goal? My, my goal was exactly what we do with our, our students. So I wanted to, do, to make my colleagues more autonomous and confident so that they could feel that, for example, even if they didn't master the language, so the English language, for example, they could still do the module and the course. Um, and to help them, I always worked as a facilitator. So I did the modules beforehand and I would add my comments to the different activities in the learning diary so that the teachers could then have a model exactly the way as we do with our students. I also shared the links um, from our learning diaries with everybody so we could really follow everybody's work. Uh, so this way, I created a sort of a, a network uh, that scaffolded the teacher's work. So they could ask me for help or they could ask each other for help. They could work in pairs. They could work the whole group. And everybody overcame their language barriers because they used translating apps. They just asked me, asked a friend, asked each other, a son, a daughter, whatever. And the, the most important is, was that no one really gave up on the course. And this was very important. And they felt that they ha had learned a lot just by attending the course and creating this learning community, which was really very important and a success, I must say. Many, many thanks. Um, interesting insights there. Now, um, I, I come to you, Lizanne. Um, we've heard a lot of, um, I think, really quite inspiring thoughts and, uh, and, and really quite positive messages in this regard. But surely this wasn't all easy to do and easy to implement, and there were diff significant challenges along the way. Can you tell us a bit about the kind of challenges that you faced um, when setting up these study groups? Yeah, yes, I will. Um, there were actually a few obstacles I had to overcome during the pilots. Um, for me, the main challenge was definitely finding the time for the study group to meet up and actually keep in touch. And to tackle this challenge, uh, there's a few things I would recommend. Um, for example, talking to the head teacher ahead of time, possibly also talk to schedule maker uh, or other administrators to make sure they understand the importance of the study group. Uh, and it is advisable to check the schedule of the MOOC ahead of time so you can plan the meetings. And uh, I actually noticed that it was not always necessary to meet up in person. Uh, I think Celeste said that as well. Um, you can also meet online or maybe sometimes one-to-one -one, um, uh, and you organize meetings for colleagues uh, that might have questions, so not for the entire study group. Um, so it's definitely advisable um, to check in with your colleagues from time to time. And um, yeah, as you know, for some teachers, the English language could be an obstacle. Um, I think it's just very important to tell your colleagues they don't really need to worry about the language. Celeste also gave some uh, really good tips. Um, and keep in mind that English is the second language for most users of the MOOC. So uh, you can definitely help, uh, help out your colleagues, um, use tools and apps. And uh, of course, a very good perk for the study group is you can speak your own language during the study group meetings. Many thanks, thanks Lizanne. Lizanne. Um, um, really good to, I'm getting quite a strong echo, if you could mute yourself, sorry. Yeah. Thanks. So uh, yeah, many thanks, Lizanne. Uh, I think some uh, really important point is there for, for colleagues who want to replicate this. Um, so, uh, I mean, I, I, as you said, it's clear that this isn't just um, an easygoing thing to set up, um, quite complex, uh, and there are challenges along the way. Um, but I think we can say that all of the pilot teachers have managed to overcome um, all the main challenges and were successful in implementing the study group. So that's important to, to add here. Now, because of the lack of time, I'm going to uh, jump a bit ahead um, and I'm going to raise uh, the, the final question of this panel um, to Guillermo Medrano. Um, Guillermo, um, you did um, quite sort of a slightly different approach uh, when it came to the study groups and when it came to generally addressing the challenges of, of these MOOCs, which I outlined at the beginning. Um, can you tell us a bit about what you did to ensure that um, the work of people working on the MOOCs uh, was recognized? Um, where do you see the opportunities to, 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 to 
get some form of formal or even informal recognition for teachers participating in these courses. Uh, okay. Uh, thank you, Ben, for the question. Uh, in my case, uh, I did uh, uh, I, I, I did the pilot in my school and also in my region. And uh, because I realized that most of the teachers did the courses out from their school hours, and this is a big effort for all of them. Uh, as a Spanish teacher, one good reward for all of them uh, should be an official certification. Uh, for the Regional Ministry of Education, uh, the teacher professional development uh, is also a key aspect. So for this pilot, we join the benefits of these three stakeholders. Firstly, the school education gateway, uh, the school education gateway courses, the teacher academy, also the regional uh, ministry of education uh, that want, wanted that training, teacher training, and also the teachers that wanted that certification. So the idea was to collaborate with the ministry of education to certificate these MOOCs and to give a formal recognition. Uh, we did this pilot and at the end we have 664 participants in the in the four courses that we have tried and uh, it was not only uh, just to, to pilot one one course because at the end we we gather information and some statistics for getting a sustainable way to set up the use of these MOOCs as a real training opportunity in my region, La Rioja, in Spain. Uh, also, a uh, uh, MOOC's completion rate is lower than 20%, but there are some, some studies that says that uh, if you certificate them, you can increase 50%, 50 about 50%, there are some numbers. And in our region, with an online support, for all the all the teachers that participate, we got 51% uh, of complexion, and also in my school, uh, with both in-person and online support, we got as 84%. So they are quite high values in comparison with the studies of, of, of. Uh, the participants' feedback after the course states that both the content and the online method are valued positively. There were many teachers that didn't uh, don courses before. And finally, in my opinion, uh, I can conclude that it is possible to create connections and to certificate, to recognize in a formal way. It's just collaborate among different stakeholders. And the work that, uh, and, and then uh, put some value in the teacher's work for, for their own learning and to have quality and valid online training courses. Many thanks, Guillermo. And I think um, what you've just outlined there is a really nice example of how this kind of pilot activity really shows um, that we can achieve some form of recognition. And uh, also some of the other teachers approach this recognition aspect and maybe not to the extent that you have you have managed to, but it is a very important mechanism that could allow us to ensure that the work, all the work that teachers do on these courses um, either just in the MOOCs or in the study groups and the MOOCs um, can uh, can achieve the the kind of recognition that it should it should get, and it's an area that we on the School Education Gateway continue to work on, um, and the work that um, you've done in that area has has been really inspiring and supportive uh, for us to proceed on. So, many many thanks to all the. Uh, um, five panelists um, today. Uh, apologies, uh, we've had to rush a bit through it, but uh, I hope um, you, the ideas you've shared, uh, the insights you've shared, have given a, a better understanding to the, the, the attendees of this webinar today of how to replicate this idea of study groups in schools uh, to use MOOCs. So, um, I do want to just quickly um, see with Anna if there are any key questions um, for the panelists or for Eleanor or for the other colleagues. Um, um, what's been happening in the chat? I've had one eye on the chat, but um, is there is there anything well, that you'd flag up, Anna? Yeah, well, there there has been a lot going on in the chat. Uh, many compliments and congratulations to our speakers and panelists today. Uh, many participants raise uh, the, uh, the 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 
the concern that, of course, uh, challenges can arise depending on the environment, on the type of school you are in. Many are worried about the language barrier, of course. There is an interesting question that uh, asks about uh, if there are, um, Ben, maybe you can answer this question, actually, uh, whether the European Commission is uh, um, is uh, taking care, is providing opportunities, other opportunities for teachers, for professional development or for carrying on this project. And I know that there are some ideas uh, already about that. Uh, so, so the question is if, if this kind of project will continue, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, okay, yes, um, of course, I can I can answer that. So, um, not exactly in this format, um, but there will be um, some kind of mechanism that will ensure we continue the work in this area. So, uh, quite concretely speaking, um, we will be working with the kind of resources that were developed in this project uh, and to turn that into, um, for example, a self-study module. So, it's a sort of self-study course that we are going to um, tag on to all of our courses. So, we really want to make sure that the messages that um, came out of this exercise and that were presented at this webinar today uh, are enshrined in, in, in the follow up in the following in the, in the courses um, in all of the courses that we offer uh, on the teacher academy. Um, there's also some other areas um, which I can't really say too much about right now because it's not entirely clear yet what that will entail. Um, but for sure, it's uh, an area that is gaining attention um, beyond also um, just the, the team at the European Commission working uh, uh, on the School Education Gateway. Um, and it is something we, we definitely want to continue working on. So I can't tell you much details as of yet right now, unfortunately, but um, uh, be assured uh, we'll continue the work on this. And um, yeah. A any other questions, any other key points that came up? Uh, well, actually, well, yeah, most of the, the end of the questions that were posed uh, at the beginning of the webinar, I think that the the uh, the, uh, the panelists have answered throughout the webinar, so I would not uh, highlight anything in particular. Uh, we have also posted in the chat uh, the link to the survey monkey. So uh, the participants can answer the final uh, survey and will be then redirected to the School Education Gateway webinar uh, page. And from there, if they are registered users, they can download their own uh, that certificate. And that's okay, it. Then, well, then let me just say uh, just a few more words. And I saw that there were also some comments to this effect in the chat. So I do quickly want to take the opportunity. I know we're a bit over time to flag up some of the supporting resources that come out of the work from the pilot teachers. So there's a really nice video which um, outlines the experiences from the teachers um, with a nice animation of the different steps. Um, so you can find the link on the webinar page uh, or you can have a have a sort of short bitly link here as well. There's also a more comprehensive ebook slash report um, which you can access, which really goes into detail of the experiences of the pilot teachers and outlines a step by step process of replicating what they did. Uh, and then very shortly, we'll also be publishing um, short, a shorter version of that report, so a two-page info sheet which summarizes all the key steps. So if you if you found interesting what you heard today, um, make sure to check this out. Um, there's also um, a news article um, which was published uh, during the during the pilot early in the year, uh, which you can take a look where you can find more information. And then um, also next year, as I've already mentioned, there will be um, some some more concrete resources coming out of this activity. There will be a self-study module, which I've mentioned, and there will be two further webinars uh, similar to this one, um, probably structured slightly differently. Um, that will help teachers who are interested in this approach and want to replicate it to also do it themselves. Uh, and the idea is that this will be sort of a, a continued activity um, as we move into the subsequent years. Yes, uh, and then finally, uh, very importantly, um, I think many of you have already asked uh, about this in the chat. Um, certificates will be uh, provided to those who participated here, um, but we would like to get your feedback um, on this um, webinar as well. So um, please use the link that um, has been posted in the chat um, to give us some feedback. And in order to get the certificate, you actually need to fill in that survey first. Uh, bear in mind also, if you want a certificate that you need to have an account on the School Education Gateway platform, as Anna already said, 
And uh, bear in mind that um, the survey has to be um, completed within the next 24 hours. So if you don't do it now, make sure you copy paste it um, somewhere uh, outside of this meeting environment. And then your certificate will become available um, via your School Education Gateway profile. That's it uh, from us. Um, a very big thank you to all the panelists, speakers and colleagues who were part of this uh, of the preparation here. A big thank you to everybody uh, who attended. Um, thanks to everybody who posted comments and questions into the chat. And I very much hope that um, you will take this forward. Um, uh, this idea is just the start of a uh, really way to, to make more and more effective use of MOOCs. Um, at, at a school-based level. So that's it from us. Many thanks, a good evening to all, and uh, hopefully see you soon on one of our courses. Goodbye. Thank you, goodbye.